Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec. Uh, I want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who's been supporting this channel. Uh, I've been getting a lot of good feedback, uh, people who are appreciative for the videos and saying that they've helped them, and, and that that's really been my main reason for actually creating this channel is just to kind of give back to the community, to be able to teach people, hopefully that I'm un explaining things in a way that's easy for people to understand. Um, so again, thank you. Um, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a tool called Cool, which is the custom word list generator. So let's go ahead and get started with it here. All right, so Cool falls into the category of password cracking tools in Kali. So first off, what exactly is Cool? Um, in, in its basic definition, it's just a program that you can use to generate a custom word list uh, based on your target website. So basically, you just give it a URL, and it's going to spider that site, and it extracts unique words that you can then use with a password cracking program like John or Hashcat. Uh, so why would you want to create a custom list? Uh, when it comes to creating passwords, you know people most of the time are not very creative. Uh, the average user is not going to use a 20 character passphrase. Uh, so the passwords that they do choose are usually pretty predictable. And we've seen that if you've kept up with any of the, uh, the data breaches that have taken place like with the Ashley Madison or Adobe, any of those that have yielded large password lists, and you can see that the passwords people are using are just not very strong at all. And, you know, when words like password123, uh, something like that, when it comes up, you know that people are just not thinking when, when they're creating their passwords. And a lot of times um, people will use things like their favorite sports team, uh, a pet name, uh, the name of the company that they work for. And a lot of times in the user's mind to make it a secure strong password they'll do something like adding a number to the end of the word so you'll have maybe like password one two three uh, or something like that that's just you know in, in the modern age of password cracking those passwords are going to get cracked in, in no time at all so for a pen tester creating a custom word list based on the company that you're targeting can possibly get you a larger number of legitimate passwords back. Uh, once you generate this list with Cool, then you can go back and do some manual recon and add some more custom words to your list. So uh, things like viewing a user's profile on like Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, people will post every aspect of their lives out on social media sites. And you can learn a lot about a person just by going through those pages that they've set up. So consider it like this. Um, just say that you're doing a pen test and you want to target the account of the company's CEO. Uh, the probability is pretty high that you can use a dictionary style attack to get their password um, just by maybe looking at their Facebook page. So you pull up the CEO's Facebook page you may see things like what their favorite hobby is, uh, their kids' names, uh, birthdays, anniversary dates, uh, anything like that. And since you are targeting a person at a company, it's also a good possibility that they're going to use the company name as part of their password in some form or fashion. So they, they may do uh, like the company name and then put a one at the end of it or put an exclamation mark, uh, something like that. So using these custom word lists, word lists uh, gives you a better chance of success in gaining access to their account uh, instead of just using some of the default lists that are out there. Now, um, in this video, I'm obviously not going to cover every detail about how password cracking works, uh, but these are, these are just some of the basic reasons why you would want to create a custom word list. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the options that are available. Uh, as you can see, I've already got I've got two terminal windows pulled up here. I'm just going to leave one up for the to show the options, and then this other one I'm going to use as our working window. So as you can see, there there's really not a ton of options uh, to go over, uh, but what uh, the options that are here. Uh, are actually pretty useful and can definitely help you create those custom lists. So we're just going to start working through and one thing that you're going to notice some of these options are meant to be used in conjunction with other options. So as um, as we go through the tutorial I'm going to be grouping those together so we're not necessarily going to go you know from top to bottom going over each option. Uh, it's basically going to be broken down into the function of the option and and how they are uh, how they work together. So let's just start with some basic usage of the tool. Uh, you can run cool without specifying any options at all. So um, as I was putting this tutorial together, I just picked a random website out on the internet. So I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to pull up cool here and the site that I picked was called ridecarts.com. Uh, I do need to make sure I specify the the host portion of the uh, of the domain there. So if you just type it in, hit enter with no options and then we'll give it just a minute here and it should come back with a list of words from that website. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. All right, hurry up here. Oh, there we go. So you can see it's gone through the site, and these are all of the unique words that it discovered on that website. And there's actually quite a long list that it came back with. So this is what it looks like running cool without any options specified. And uh, one of the one thing to point out here. Uh, since we ran it with no options specified, all we're getting is this output here in the terminal window. This did not actually save anything uh, that we can go back to and reference later. In order to save your results, all you need to do is add the TAC W switch, which as you can see here, this lets you specify a file to write your output to. So let's just do... Uh, ridecarts.txt. I'll hit enter there. And uh, for this demo, I just created a directory on my uh, computer called cool just to keep all the files in. And if, if you are doing a pen test, I, of course, I always recommend this, but um, I always create a folder that's named based on the company that I'm targeting. Uh, just so keep everything organized and I know where to find all the files uh, when I need to go back to them. Alright, so this is finished. Now if we just do an ls here, we can see that it created the ridecarts.txt file. And if I just cat that out, you can see it contains the same data that we got uh, when we ran it the first time. Now we can also, if you just wanted to quickly find out what the word count was, uh, how many entries it came back with. If you just do a WC TAC L and then the name of your file and then we can see here that there are a little over 24 almost 2500 entries within this file. So that's a decent size word list to start with and it is customized and targeted specifically for your uh, target site. All right, so let's take a look at some of the options for uh, spidering a site. So this first one, first option that we're going to look at is this tax C option. And basically all this does is show you the number of times a word is found uh, in that particular uh, website. So if we take a look at it here and we just run cool tax C and then we put in our uh, target domain. Uh, yeah, that looks right. Hit enter. And of course, too, uh, one thing to keep in mind, depending on the size of the uh, website that you're going against, 
Uh, this process could actually take a few minutes to run. Just depends on how many pages it has to go through. And I, I'll be covering some different options with that here in just a little bit. All right, so that has finished. And you can see now each of the words has a number out from it. If we go all the way back to to the beginning, and you can see the numbers have increased. So basically what this is telling you is, uh, just for example, this word end was found 459 times. Now the benefits of doing this, if you just want to get use the tax C first and kind of look through, this is going to help you to tweak your word list and kind of narrow it down and focus it more. Uh, when you're when you're looking at doing you know password cracking, you're probably not going to want to include words like the and and uh, for. So you can use this to to cut those out of your list. But then if you look at words like this, like transportation. 220 times that was found on the site. Something like this, it's a good possibility that one of the users has used this word in some form or fashion as their password. The higher, the way I look at it, I guess, is the higher the number count, um, the more likely it will be that somebody uses that as part of their password. So let me clear this out. And all right, so the, the next option we're going to look at is the TAC D option. And this one controls the spidering depth. So by default, if you don't use this option, uh, Cool is going to only spider two pages deep into the site. If you use TAC D, then you can specify you know, a higher number. And again, like I said, um, depending on the size of the site, this process could take a, quite a while. Uh, if you have a large number of pages and if you increase, increase this number quite a bit. So be careful because the higher you do increase this number, it is going to generate more traffic to the target site. So just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the next one that goes along with this is the TAC O switch. And this tells Cool that it can visit sites that are linked outside of your target domain. So like with this ridecarts.com site, if there is a hyperlink uh, that goes maybe like, uh, we'll just say uh, yahoo.com, then what's going to happen is if you use this TACO option, Cool is not only going to spider the ridecarts site, but it's also going to follow that hyperlink and go spider Yahoo's site. And this is something that I guess could kind of get you into a gray territory because if it's following links to domains that are not in your target scope, there, there could be some issue there with legalities uh, since, since that external domain is not in your target scope. It, it's a possibility that you know somebody could complain if they see excess tr uh, traffic coming from your scans. So this is another option just to be careful with. If it's a good idea if, if something is not in your target scope, then it's best just to stay away from it if you're not sure if it's going to cause any problems or not. And then the next option that goes kind of kind of goes along with this group of options here is this tack M option, which just lets you specify a minimum word length. And you, as you can see here, the default is three. So, uh, as you saw in our when we did our other scan, words like and and the and for were showing up on our list. If you happen to know um, maybe part of the password policy for your target, uh, maybe that they have it set where. Um, your minimum password length has to be at least eight characters. Then you can use this TACM switch and set it to eight. And that way, when Cool Spiders the side, it's only going to return words to you that are at least eight characters in length or greater. So again, this is something else that will help you to um, to narrow down and focus your your list even more, and kind of gets rid of those extraneous words that you probably 
wouldn't include with your password cracking anyway. Now this next group of options is going to allow us to scan for uh, metadata that's contained within the site. So Cool will actually download certain file types from a site and then it uses the EXIF tool to extract the metadata out of them. And then these extra words can then be added to your word list if you want, want them to. So Cool will download things like uh, documents, uh, PDFs, PowerPoint files, uh, just to name a few. There's, there are uh, several file extension types that it will download and uh, try to extract metadata out of. So in conjunction with the uh, with this TAC A switch, you can also tell Cool to keep those downloaded files, and you would do that by using the uh, let's see this uh, TAC K switch, which just tells it to keep them. And you may want to keep those files for future reference. Maybe uh, if you're doing more recon on your target, there may be something contained in those documents that. Uh, can help you gain a foothold. And then to save this uh, data, uh, by default, Cool will store these files in the slash temp directory. But you can use, um, which one is it here? Uh, this tag tag meta temp directory. You can use this switch to specify another directory that you want to save the files to. So let's go ahead and run this here. I'm going to do cool and let's just specify another temp directory and I'm going to use my uh, root oh. well goodness I can't top Sorry guys, I'll get it going here in a second. All right, so we've specified the directory. Actually, let me clear the screen off here so it's not so cluttered. All right, so we've specified the directory to save these files. And we're going to we're going to tell it to use the TAC A option so that it processes the metadata. And I want to use the TAC TAC meta underscore file option to uh, to give the file a name so let's just call it ride carts meta dot text and then we'll give it our uh, URL and hopefully I type that in correctly let's see what happens here everyone always loves live demos except for the person doing them Alright, so it looks like it's finished. Let's do an LS and see if anything came up. Alright, so you can see that it actually created three files here. These cool temp files. Um, so let's have a look and see just what's contained within one. It should just be a bunch of HTML. Let's, uh, yep. All right, so it saved this data for you, and then the EXIF tool will use these files to actually go in and extract any metadata. And also, any if there were any documents or anything on the site, they would also have been stored here as well and saved for us. So let's go ahead and clear the screen out here. So looking at the metadata could also be helpful because a lot of times... Uh, especially like with maybe Word documents or PDF files, um, they will contain things like the author's name, uh, possibly email addresses, or uh, sometimes you can even find um, like internal directory structures or something like that that can be used to, to help you in your pen test to get you maybe a better understanding of what the internal network looks like or at least uh, what a certain... Uh, server structure looks like a directory structure looks like so it's always a good idea to check the metadata when possible all right so these next couple of options that we're going to look at uh, actually pertain to how cool connects to a website so this first grouping that we're going to look at is the authentication options 
So it may be that your target requires either HTTP basic or digest authentication before you can actually access the site. Uh, so cool gives you the ability to uh, specify those options here. So if you just use the tech tech off top and then specify whether it's either digest or basic authentication and then give it the uh, the username and the password required. And currently cool only supports either digest or basic. Uh, it does not support uh, like NTLM authentication. Uh, the next group is for proxy access. Um, I think these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just quickly go over them here. Uh, so if you have to go through a proxy to get to your target, uh, you can specify the proxy host, whether it's a uh, either a proxy name or an IP address, uh, the port that the proxy is on, and then the username and password if one is required for that proxy. And the next option that um, I've kind of grouped together with these, uh, it's not necessarily, uh, well, I, I guess I kind of considered it a connection type option, uh, is the TAC U for the user agent. So this will let you specify your own user agent to send when Cool performs its spidering. Uh, one reason that you might want to use this uh, is it, your target may have like an IPS or a WAF set up. And um, maybe the user agent that Cool sends could be flagged by one of those, uh, trigger some kind of alert. So if you specify a user agent that's common, maybe like one of the Mozilla strings or, or some of the other ones, then it will let you bypass any uh, like WAF rules that may be in place. And if you're not familiar with, uh, of course, I know nobody's got all of the user agent strings memorized, but there is a website that you can go to reference these. And I've got it pulled up here. And it's just um, useragents.org. And if you just look down the list here, you can see there are a ton of different user agent strings that you can use. So you could, you could select one of these. Uh, and then just specify using that tag you option. Uh, I will put this link in the description below so you guys can go check it out later. And then so up to this point, the options that we've looked at have been pretty much focused on generating a list uh, that we can use with a password cracker. Uh, but Cool also gives us the option to gather possible usernames from a site. And it does this in the form of any email addresses that are contained. And there are a couple of switches that you can use uh, to extract email addresses from a website. So you have this, uh, this tech E option. And this basically just tells Cool to include email addresses when it's spidering. And then you can use this tech tech email file uh, option to specify a file to save those email addresses in. So if we go back to our uh, ride carts example, let me just do cool. I'm going to do tech E and then we'll do tech tech email file. And I'm just going to call it ride carts email dot text. And then we'll give it the domain name again. Hit enter. And it should generate a list that contains any email addresses that are referenced within the HTML of that website. And I believe it does this by looking at any of the uh, any of the mail to uh, tags that are contained within the HTML. All right, so that's finished. Let's do an ls again. And all right, yeah, it created our file. So let's just cat it out real quick and see what it looks like. No. All right, so you can see it did find a couple of email addresses here. So Donna at ridecarts.com, info at ridecarts, etc. So then you could extract these email addresses out and um, create like a custom username list for your site. 
So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, there weren't a ton of options for us to go through. Um, but I hope you did see that uh, Cool is actually a very useful tool. It's actually, uh, when it comes to generating custom word lists, this is probably one of the top tools that most people go to first. Um, I would suggest for you guys to spend some time with it uh, and maybe do a comparison. If, if, you, if you've got a lab set up, um, maybe run some tests. You know, try to crack a password using a just a default word list that uh, maybe is contained already within Kali or something that you downloaded from the Internet. And then go back and create a custom word list and um, see if you get any uh, better results from using a custom list versus just a default one. Uh, so again, before I go, I, I just wanted to say again, and I hope you don't think I say it too, too much, but I really do appreciate the support that you guys have given me. Um, knowing that I'm actually helping somebody to learn something new is, is the motivation that I need and that I use to actually keep making videos. Um, I've had um, I have had a lot of good feedback. I've had people who say that I have helped them. Uh, they they ask me to keep making videos. I, I know there's been uh, a little bit of an absence with me doing uploads, and the main reason is I actually started a new job uh, probably a couple of months ago, and so that has been keeping me pretty busy. Um, but I'm kind of settling into it now, I, you know, kind of getting into the groove of things, I guess. So I, I'm freeing up some time uh, to get back into making these videos. Uh, again, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, just leave them in the description below. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, tell me how you found my channel on YouTube. Um, I'm always curious how people are finding me. I, I think a lot of times people just find it maybe through a Google search for a certain topic or a YouTube search. So I'm curious how you find me. Um, again, guys, I appreciate everything. Stay tuned because I will be putting more videos out. I'm actually working on one now that is for um, another one of the machines that is on VulnHub. Uh, so as soon as I get the notes and everything finished for that one, I'm going to get it recorded and get it posted for y'all. Uh, so as always, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. Stay cool. No pun intended. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.